Thank you for tuning into the Stampscapes channel. On this scene, I'm making some tweaks on the previous composition that I did on a live stream, featuring the red barn only on this one. I'm doing a quarter page piece as opposed to a slimline um, half page piece. And I am switching out the barn for the uh, smaller version because of the smaller format. And on this scene, I'm going to be doing a process that I haven't done before, which is more of this, I don't know what you'd call it, um, kind of a paper piecing card. I don't think I've ever cut out imagery and pieced them together um, to make a scene, but um, there's always a first. Okay, now the reason why I'm doing this is because I really wanted that red barn to stand out against a background in a much more kind of a uh, sharp and, uh, I don't know, less subtle way, okay? Now, in my previous one, I did everything on a piece of uh, pretty much matte cardstock, okay? It's where I stamp all the imagery, traditional stamping, and then you color in your um, various um, areas afterwards. But on this one, I thought, if I'm going to be doing this piecing, why don't I do it on the against the blue foil, so something really dramatic. Okay, so I cut, um, stamped out that red bar. Now I'm just taking a French curve here, and I'm making a um, kind of a, not a template, but just a, a cutout of what will be my background snowbank that I kind of build the composition on. Okay, so I'm kind of figuring out if that's the right angle right there, and uh, I don't know, kind of getting a good idea of how this um, mirror card format is going to look. So periodically you have to kind of um, make an assessment and see how that's going to look, you know, and especially um, observe how it's going to look in the foreground. Okay, now I decided I needed that uh, slope to be a little bit less um, um, varied, so I kind of flattened it out a little bit. And I'm just kind of positioning that out with a little bit of a pen so I know where that uh, slope is going to go. And we're going to add in some background trees here. Okay, and one of the things that I did on that red barn was I kind of darkened the, the, uh, the rooftop. And again, it's because I just stamped it out on red paper. I don't have the uh, option of going back in and making certain areas of the barn a different color again because it is just inherently stamped out on um, a colored paper so you know everything is going to be that color okay so um, the pines and uh, pine row stamp stamped out in white brilliance ink white brilliance ink dries very easily with um, heat setting okay positioning just checking it out again seeing how that's going to look looks pretty good in terms of the reflected area and that red barn, um, I don't know, it stands out okay. If I had um, a little bit of a lighter, warmer red, I think it would have been better, but we can make a little bit of a, a tweak to it in terms of the colors with colored pencil. That um, paper that I was using is a iridescent red. I didn't have too many red um, card stocks or anything like that, or construction paper, so... I just don't use it very often, so I didn't have it. So I just had to kind of use what I had. Okay, so these will be two cutouts of my tree trunks. Later on, I figured out, oh, I should have just stamped them on the same piece of... Well, they're on the same piece of paper, but um, I could have done that sloping background um, hill and these trees on the same piece of paper, which would have alleviated some of the uh, issues that I had later on and I'll talk to you uh, I'll show you you know I'll talk about that when I get to it but it would have saved a little bit of time but again I wasn't thinking about certain things like that I, again I haven't done this process before of cutting out so um, and again I wanted these trees to really stand out against a background so they're going to be pasted or glued up against um, that white uh, snowy bank and the blue um, foil uh, background or sky. 
Okay, now these are stamped on a silk coated paper, which is a semi gloss, but it's much, much closer to a matte paper, so you can use colored pencils on it. And what I'm doing with this Brilliance ink is I'm going in and I'm darkening one side of each of the uh, trunks, and you'll see where that comes into play as far as scenic lighting when I paste them in there or when I position them. All right, so just get a nice close cut. Don't be afraid of cutting into the uh, trunks even because those will be going right up against uh, the background papers that have already been established. I wasn't quite sure how much to trim off the bottom of these trunks because I'd, I wasn't quite sure how they'd integrate in with the, uh, the white down below. So I kind of had to figure that out. But again, I was just figuring um, on how to... Uh, um, kind of integrate them with shadows later on. Now when I look at this, that white kind of blends in pretty well, so it's like, okay. I didn't know how, you know, close I would have to uh, trim the bottom part of the uh, image, in other words. Okay, so uh, being that these are cutouts right here and on the matte paper, you can go ahead and color them in. At first, I, I, I stamp these out in the VersaFine Claire, okay? So I, I try to use a little bit of uh, alcohol ink, but that really smears the, uh, the oil-based um, pigment ink of the Claire around, so the colored pencils were a pretty good way to go. Okay, so just checking it out again in terms of the uh, positioning. Seeing how that looks in the reflection down below. I mean, there, there's a lot of variation you can do this, but, um, you know, this kind of gives you a good idea. You should be kind of taking a look and seeing how that's going to look, not only on the scene itself, the main scene, but also since this is a mirror card in the reflection. Okay, so I've, I think I've found a pretty good spot for that um, barn. So I make my little, um, I don't know, whatever registration little marks on the back, positioning right there. And you can see where that... Um, black rooftop coming uh, comes into play right there it uh, you know, blocks off the uh, the background trees pretty well although it's only that rooftop only goes into it a little bit but having an open red roof wouldn't have looked right okay so kind of getting my idea on where to position this my trees are going to be hanging off the side like that so I'll just trim those off later okay and positioning I kind of ended up positioning that a little bit kind of angled, but I don't know, as far as the composition goes, I thought it was okay. So accordingly, I kind of angle this one a little bit off to the uh, side as well in the opposite direction. And sometimes you do that in terms of compositional, uh, I don't know, kind of uh, formatting anyway. Kind of like, it's like a curtain opening up to the stage in the background featuring your main focal point, which of course is the barn. Okay, so we need to trim off that excess um, amount of uh, trees. You just take your ruler and your um, knife, exacto knife, or whatever you're using, and get that trimmed off. In scenic stamping, you don't have to have the entire stamp of every stamp, you know, um, represented in the end result. You can just have parts of them and it looks completely natural. Okay, so getting my kind of bearings going again, figuring out um, positioning and whatnot. My trees looked a little anemic to me. So I go in here and try to warm them up a little bit. Oh, on here, okay, so here's where I give my barn a little bit of variation. So just to uh, vary the... Um, lighting on that barn a little bit. I go in with my lighter. Oh, it's kind of like a beige. Um, you can go in there with a, I don't know, a pink or something like that. Some Something just kind of related to red. Now that stands out a lot, so you go in there with the black um, colored pencil and you can add in some shadows and textures with that as well. And you see that, how it looks more varied. So what you're doing is you're creating a little bit of a relationship, um, a lighting relationship, with the other objects in the scene. 
All right, not so much with the background um, trees, which are pretty uniform, but the foreground trees. You're seeing that light is hitting those trees in the foreground. So you want to hit, have that lighting, um, uh, you know, a similar lighting uh, reflecting off of that barn, in, at least in some ways. In other words, you just kind of vary it a little bit. And it just kind of relates a little bit more from, you know, not only a lighting uh, perspective, but uh, a textural perspective. All right, so I'm adding in some more, kind of deepening the shadows a little bit. And on this piece right here, this is a live stream, but I do go outside and I spray seal the, um, the trees, which brings uh, a much darker um, kind of end result to it. You know, oftentimes when you allow inks to dry. They can dry dull or lighter, but you just spray seal them and it brings back the uh, the vibrancy and value um, of the um, ink, of like a freshly stamped ink. Okay, now I'm making, um, establishing some shadows in the snow using the colored pencils. And this is where I thought, oh, okay, I should have just had that snow bank and the trees on one cutout, okay? That would have saved me some time. And you can see that little space right below the cutout where it kind of forms that little white in there. So you kind of have to get in there a little bit if you're piecing, you know, that uh, the ground, the foundation, and these trees on there. But I don't know. I didn't think it was too kind of uh, distracting a, uh, I don't know, a problem or whatnot. And I was able to get in that space, you know, not too bad. You can still see it there, though. Um, the white pigment ink kind of solves a lot of that, though. Okay, making my assessment here. Talking about the uh, red paper on there. That's a little bit reflective. It was a little bit of an iridescent paper, if I didn't mention that. Okay, this is where I try some of that. You can see how that really stands out right there. So I try to blend it in a little bit uh, with a blender pen. So I think I start utilizing, okay, I think I'm going into my uh, three millimeter white paint pen here. Right now, there's a lot of different um, types of elements in here, okay? So we have the red barn, <laughs> the brown trees stamped out in a different um, ink. Um, we have those white trees in the background. So here with these white paint pens. Okay, this is where I start integrating the trees in a little bit more with the white of the snow, okay? So I try to bring these things together. Like I said, they're they're not very integrated from a visual textural lighting standpoint. So this is where I start kind of working the scene to just kind of, kind of harmonize all of these different elements together, okay? All right, now I'm making a stronger um kind of foundation where this scene will transition into the mirrored water area. Plus, when you add a little bit of a, uh, a shadow like that at the base, what you're saying is that that snowy area is kind of a slope so that the lighting is hitting it differently. So I'm blending in some, a little bit of that uh, lilac and light blue and I'm making my assessment here. You don't want to do it too harsh, okay? I didn't do a really great job there. Now see that right down there? With all that light reflecting off of that mirrored area, I can't even really see this uh, foundation too much, so I go in with a darker blue to create a, an even stronger um, shadow base down there, okay? It's not a super dark blue or anything like that, but... Now, I didn't do a really great job at... Uh, creating that um, little shadow area down there. So all you do is just go in with the white pigment ink and see how I'm using it at the base of the tree on the side kind of facing the light, which is basically the inner area of the scene. And then you can use it down there. You can just apply some of that right over that. Oh, I'm trying to lighten some of that side of that tree like it's facing the light a little bit more. Kind of pushing light and shadow, okay? Deepening the shadows lightening the highlights. You just kind of keep doing that and making your adjustments accordingly, okay? So when you're doing these things like, okay, I'm going to add a shadow in now, and now I'm doing highlights, you know, 
don't make it like a like an A to Z type of thing. You want to make it more of a circular process where you can go back in and maybe you add more highlights, maybe you tweak the shadows. Okay, that's where I went outside and I spray sealed my piece. So if you notice, the trees are much darker now, especially in the shadow areas, the darker edges. Okay, so we've added in the three millimeter white paint pen. We've added in some of that um, foggy kind of mist area with the um, white pigment ink. Now I'm going in with the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White and splatter painting the scene. Splatter painting is going into the sky area, but it's also splattering over the front of my trees. So it's like snowfall. And it's like a common texture now over all of the different elements. Some of it splattered on my barn, um, some of it splattered over those background trees and foreground trees as well. Okay, now here we're kind of creating a little bit more continuity too between the um, foreground trees and now that background um, red barn. It's a little bit of fog and now I'm adding it in the foreground right there. So I'm giving those two elements something in common again just to kind of integrate them from a visual standpoint a little bit more and it creates harmony, okay? You have things going on in the background, foreground that are the same Okay, so adding in some larger stars, okay? Giving it some variation. You can even do a constellation if you want to with the, uh, you know, the white paint pen. All right, now I thought this scene could use um, kind of a stronger focal point or variation at least. Um, and the sky is a good way to do that. Um, if this wasn't going to be a mirror card, you can add some, you know, I would have added some crystals up there. Um, to make some of these stars really twinkly, but since this is a mirror card and it needs to close, um, I don't want something three-dimensional indenting, you know, putting um, dents into my uh, silver cardstock down below. All right, so we have a really strong focal point in the scene. You can argue that that little star has now become the strongest visual in the entire scene, even over the barn. It's kind of equal to it. So here I am going in, kind of mellowing out it, mellowing it out a little bit and then going in and I'm kind of giving a um, nice soft glow to some of these stars in the background giving them variation okay so this would be a perfect place to uh, put in some kind of you know real specific constellation you can put I don't know Big Dipper, Cassiopeia, Orion, whatever up there it'd be kind of cool alright so let's format this when I start formatting the uh, top scene, you know, that's, and gluing it down there, that's, you know, I'm pretty much done with that top portion. You can still make your tweaks on it, though. I think later on I added a little bit more of a stronger shadow to the uh, shaded side of the trees. All right, going in with my word stamp. I love word stamps in these mirror cards because it looks like it's floating on the surface when you get that reflected um, top card in the bottom one, it really looks like it's floating. See that right there? And you get that kind of parallax type of thing. You know, it's moving over the surface like that, depending on what angle you're viewing this from. Really fun. Okay, now I'm going to show you something here um, with this little um, tiny rock stamp. I had way too many of them, all right? But, um, here I am adding some of that up above, then I'll add it down below. And I'm doing it in various incarnations. You stamp it out, then you can stamp it out in a lighter version for variation. But I like the look of it in my la previous scene, but on this one I went way too far. Now that it, that one looks like some, I thought it looked like some cat walked through some baby powder or something like that, and or some puppies did, you know, and they walked all over the scene. I want some of that... Um, white showing like that, like it's floating on the surface, like a little bit of snow or just something like that. But I'm just showing you right here that when you add that in on foil, it gives you plenty of time. You can, you know, just wipe some of it off. It can even dry and you can wipe it off and it'll be perfectly fine. All right, because this, this particular pigment ink um, gives you plenty of time to wipe it off. So you need to be careful about kind of going into it and you don't want to wipe off your, you know, your um, text or whatever imagery you have in there. But if you do, if you smear it or something like that beyond repair, 
just wipe the whole thing off and just do it again. Okay, so that's some white, and I'm going to stamp some more of these little pebbles off in black right over the top of it. You can't see it because it's black on dark, so if I hold this up to light, you'll be able to see these black ones, but you won't be able to see them, um, you know, just kind of looking at it like that. So what this is is kind of variation. It's textural variation, and a lot of it is dependent on what um, light is being reflected off of it, so it's kind of cool that way. All right, now I'm debating on whether or not to add in these foreground elements like this, these branches. And a lot of times I do them in black, but I thought, okay, this is a winter scene, and I have a lot of darker imagery reflecting in that water area, so why not go with white? All right, kind of hold it down for a good amount of time to allow that ink to transfer, and there you have that kind of that foreground um, bare... Um, branch, and I'll do it on the other side for a little bit of a balance. Kind of frames off our text a little bit, and that's what it looks like. All right, so that is the card format. You can, I, I think just the top scene is really fun to do, but I'll have to do some more paper pieces. Okay, that's a little bit of compare contrast. I think I like the blue foil version, and that's my first uh, kind of construction piece in card making. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel.